Hi friends, Colleen coming to you this Sunday to ask you a bit of a favor and that is to tonight uh, when the Victoria's Secret Fashion Show comes on, don't watch it. If you could boycott it, uh, plus size model Robin Lawry has started this, uh, I think it was in October, to boycott the Victoria's Secret Fashion Show. And as a former designer of Victoria's Secret, I'm going to give you a couple of reasons of why. And to all my friends that are still working there, this isn't because I want you to go out of business or not have a job or anything like that. I'm actually really proud that I worked for an American company that was a leader in the market when it was a leader in the market back in the day. As far as um, why I think that it's best to avoid a, a big uh, quote that we have in the sustainability arena here in fashion is by Anna Lape and it's, you, uh, you decide on the world you decide on the type of world you want, or you cast a vote for the, the type of world that you want by the way you spend your money. So if you're not giving limited brands or Victoria's Secret your money or your eyes, you're then taking away you know, their, their power. And so that's when we can enact real change and call them out and say like, hey, this is something that's lacking and we want you to do better. So I'm just offering this as a way for um, VS to do better. I want you guys to win. And these are uh, a couple of reasons where I think there, there could be uh, ways for improvement to do better. And one of them, got my little fact sheet here, is uh, the lacking of rep representation, which is where this is all coming from, all stemming from, in that in your show since 1995, you know, the market has changed significantly since 1995, and you only include tall, thin, white, mostly white women. And I appreciate and offer or applaud your efforts of including like uh, models like Winnie Harlow this year um, because she's big and of course that's gonna bring you more eyes. Um, I don't think you're necessarily doing it for good but more just for a marketing purpose. Um, and I just wanna say that you're missing out on including a lot of your customer. And the average person isn't, or the average woman isn't seeing herself represented on the stage there. And so uh, a couple of the reasons why I quit at VS four years ago, I started with them in 2010 and worked with them with almost five years, which is a long time for someone in the apparel industry in New York. A uh, couple of reasons why I quit is of course, because as you, if you know me, I love sustainability. And unfortunately, a lot of the efforts that I was bringing to them to uh, help with their efforts of making things less wasteful, a little bit more mindful, fell on deaf ears. So that was, of course, frustrating to me. But also the second reason, and a big reason when I, I finally had it, was the uh, graphics that we were putting out and the, the words that we were putting on them. And I, to me, I think your word is very important and that words count. So when they're putting out things like anything but cardio, you can't sweat with us uh, you're kind of you're doing two things one you're you're not including a plus-size model in your shows which by the way the plus-size model that uh, was calling this out is actually a size 12 but she still has a banging body and is super beautiful and has a daughter and is amazing um, she looks like an average beautiful girl that just isn't you know super skinny or doesn't starve herself to be in your show and uh, another big one of the messaging that I thought you guys like really bombed at was your boyfriend says hi. Why are we telling the market segment, which the Victoria's Secret Pink Girl is from 9 to 22 year old young female, we're telling them one, don't sweat, don't sweat with us, don't be inclusive, don't build each other up, and then your boyfriend says hi. What type of messaging is that giving to our future generations of our young women? Here, it sounds like to me we're cutting each other down. We need to build each other up and encourage, you know, going to the gym, working out together, including those type of uh, things in what we're putting out. I think it starts with the marketing and you guys have a lot of eyes on your product uh, and could do a lot of really great things. So two, you've always put in and have on your uh, backboard from when I used to travel between New York and Ohio, inclusion makes us stronger. But unfortunately, when I was working there, there were a lot of times when you weren't even including the workers that were putting out the work for you. And I'm talking about the CAD team. There's probably about anywhere from 30 to 45 of us. 
And what ended up happening is we were kept as contractors. And again, I worked there for almost five years and I was kept as a contractor and never hired as full time. And the reason why they would do that is keeping, keeping people as contractors is they don't have to pay your health insurance, which we all know is super expensive. But if you're not paying any of your health insurance, you're not giving us any 401ks, which if you're a full-time employee, you would get. Also, until 4114, when New York State law passed, or passed it as a law, you weren't giving it any of our sick days. So if we didn't work, we were SOL. And so I don't see how that's including anyone if you're actually making a lot of money off of us by not giving us what was fair wages at that time. And maybe it still isn't now, I don't know. That's why I quit. So um, it's been said that in 2016, Ed Rizek, who is the chief marketing officer and creator of the Victoria's Secret Fashion Show, spent a whopping $20 million on the show in 2016. Well, that's where my raise and everything else went through because in those five years, I asked for a raise three times. I was denied three times, three times. It was super hurtful too because I had actually proven my value on how I had become a better worker, more efficient from the time I started to those three times that I had asked for a raise. And maybe you just think that this is someone ranting about like something that it, someone that's like butt hurt over something that did them wrong. But I'm gonna give you an example of how I proved my value. I'm a Buffalo girl, so anyone from Buffalo or anyone that likes hockey will be familiar with this graphic. I brought this to the then, at the time, the uh, licensed apparel designer thinking that they could be used for inspiration, for something to be taken from, but not exactly. Come to find out, which I found out is also a very Buffalo saying, they used it on all 30 of their NFL teams, the 30 MLB teams, and also all, probably approximately 30 of the PCC collegiate teams that they had uh, been working with and partnering at that time. So they made millions. And not to mention, that's literally copyright infringement. Like, it's identical. So there's also another reason why I'm <laughs> not so happy with uh, VS. Uh, so yes, also, as a contractor, no 401k, no sick leave, no health. And then when you finally, the third party that uh, we did work with, they offered us uh, six days vacation pay time. But you had to, working up to uh, 26, the 26 weeks working up to whatever time you had taken off, you needed to, to average at least 38.75 to 40 hours per week in order to qualify for that vacation time. I tried five years in a row. In five years in a row, I, I made it to 999.75 hours uh, leading up to what I was going to do for vacation time, and I was denied because a quarter of an hour short, I was denied a week of vacation. And then I also wasn't ever given like a full 40 hours a week. So if you're wondering where all the uh, glitz and glamor goes or where they get all the money for the glitz and glamor for the show, that's probably part of it. Uh, also, let's see, my zero waste efforts as, as I had mentioned. Um, you guys aren't doing anything to be more sustainable or mindful. And I think that that's also kind of a miss that you guys just have kind of ignored. And in case you missed it on your um, trend report, you'll see this scrolling down at the bottom of your screen. Just a quick ad in case you missed it. Ethical is trending. Being mindful and kindness is cool is actually a thing in 2018. And it just doesn't seem like you're hitting the mark on that. And you're also losing money. I've been watching your stocks. They're not going up. They've been going down. And again, it's not because I want you to lose. I'm just saying you can do better. And so the people that are winning at this, the other brands that are actually doing well, are growing their, um, their brand with ethical and inclusive types of messaging. Um, the Rihanna uh, Savage and Fenty show. They actually included a pregnant mom in their lineup of models. Whereas, unfortunately, you're still lacking diversity in that and missing a whole market segment of like your customer. When 
if you consider yourself a leader in lingerie, how are you not actually showing the person that is buying your, uh, your stuff? Like I personally, as a former designer, I will, I will not support, I will not buy Victoria's Secret anymore because you've lost, you've lost my, um, my brand loyalty because there isn't anything like super rad that you guys have been doing lately that I think I want to support you in or give my money to. And also when I used to fly back and forth between uh, Columbus and Ohio, there was a messaging um, mark in one of the rooms and it was, I'm gonna see if I can turn this around here. Um, it is listening, connecting, inspiring, creating customers for life. Well, I just gotta tell you, I don't know that people are still listening anymore. <laughs> They're not connecting with you and you're not inspiring. Uh, I think you're kind of missing the mark as far as you know, body positivity and putting positive messaging out to the young future female leaders of this world. And unfortunately, like that's a big mess on your end. And so I'm just asking for you VS, tip the scales in your favor and have some models that look like your customers. Have some um, diversity in the color of skin that is going down the runway. And maybe instead of talking about like the six packs or like how skinny someone is, maybe talk about like what the models are doing outside of their model life. Maybe they're entrepreneurs or they own their own business and are lawyers, doctors, or something of that sort. Those are the type of models that we have in our eco fashion show down here in Miami. And I'll tell you, everyone that's involved has a great time and we still sell product. We still make it a, a, good, a good time. And although we're not as big as uh, limited brands, that's okay. We have a great time and we're doing good. And then one more reason, especially um, yesterday, as part of what I do with my work, I mentor a number of up and coming designers. And yesterday I was asked to uh, judge an upcycle competition at the local fashion institute here in Miami. And within, within the first two minutes of one of the young high school designers um, coming down to give her presentation, she had said sorry four times. And so before she went any further, I had to interject. And I told her, I was like, this isn't, I'm not calling out you out to shame you. It's just a habit that I had once had in the past two. There's no reason for you to say sorry. You're not doing anything wrong. We're here to help you. We're here to mentor you. So Victoria's Secret, if you're the leader that you say you are in the lingerie industry, I ask that, I don't know, you say sorry, you make amends, you listen more, you be more mindful of what your customers are telling you that they want so that you can continue to be successful and you can continue to be a leader in the market. Otherwise, why, why are like, what is the point in watching a show where no one that none of our uh none of an average person is represented and i just think that it's super important that we encourage our young women to be okay with how they are just as they just as they are because on average by the age of 13 i think it's somewhere 58 percent of 13 year olds are not happy with their body and by seven by 17 it's gone up to this little fact sheet here it has gone up to 78%. So at 17, 78% of 17 year olds aren't happy with their body. I think that instead of um, being an angry activist and like pointing fingers, why not go to the top as someone like you and say, you have the opportunity, you have all these eyes on your product, you have all this amazing coverage. Why not trickle down that message that Inclusion does make us stronger, that there is body diversity and we can have a mix of different shapes, shades, and sizes in the show. And this isn't a conversation about like everyone gets a trophy and I'm not about that. It's not what I'm asking for, but just have better positive messaging. So I've never done this before, but I want to ask you because tonight's the show. Please like, please share, please like tag any female in your life that has ever felt not good enough. And for all my Latina friends, being a gringa down here in Miami, I just want to say, compartalo a todos mujeres en tu vida, porque this is super important for us to build each other up as women and say, you are good enough just the way you are. So thank you for your time.